Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is the Ramble, and I am Alex Bennett, and we're here until uh, you know until the uh, cock crows or my cock crows. No, the cock crows at midnight uh, Eastern Daylight Time. We'll be here. Hi, how are you? No guests tonight, just me. Hi. Aren't you happy? Don't you like it when I just talk to you? Yeah. Oh, boy. Dealing with all... I've been dealing with all kinds of things here today. And um, among, among the things that I've been dealing with, um, uh, first of all, uh, Marjorie decides she's going to clean under the sink and she moves something or another and we develop a leak in the, in the uh, sink, in the, uh, under the sink. So I don't know what she did, but I changed a filter that was there and made it tighter, and it still was kind of leaking water. So I had to tighten that up some more tonight, and then it's still leaking a little bit, and I'm, uh, uh, it's time to call the super, I guess. Yeah, all right. Anyway, so I had that. And then, you know, Roku, God bless them. I mean, I've had a Roku channel now for how many years? Uh and uh, they, you know, they have a pretty good product there. But th- th- this one machine I've got is just terrible, and it takes forever to boot up. So I finally decided to hit the restart button, and I hit the restart button, and when I did, it got rid of everything that was on there, all uh, all the apps that were on there. So then I reinstall it. And then it re-puts in all the apps. But the only thing about, now with Apple TV, which is great, if I, say, get another Apple TV and I put it in this room here, and I want it to look like the one in the other room and to have all my passwords and everything, I just simply tell it to do that and um, uh, tell it to be a, a mirror of the machine in another room and all of a sudden, I don't have to do anything. I can just start using the Apple TV like the one in the other room. No, not with Roku. You've got to, you've got to, first, they put all the, all the apps back on for you, but they're not where they were. So you now have to move them. And when you move them, you have to hit a button that says move, and then you hit move, and then you have to go up. And it only goes up one row at a time. You've got to click it each time. So by the end of the evening, you've got like carpal tunnel syndrome, and your hand is looking like a claw. So I spent an hour doing that, getting the Roku back into shape. So that was another problem. Did I have any other problems today? No, that was about it. Thank God. Very few problems today. Not many, you know. Yesterday, I had a whole bunch of problems, uh, but I solved them, and I had time to solve them. So, But, you know, I would like to have just one day I, where, where I, nothing technical happens wrong, and, and Marjorie doesn't come to me going, there's a leak in the kitchen. And, uh, oh, also, she couldn't get the washing machine going, uh, the uh, dishwasher going. Well, sometimes when the dishwasher, you push the button and it doesn't light up, it's because it just needs to be restarted and I go over to number 12 in the fuse box and click it and turn it back on and everything works. But you know, it's just one thing after another and I'm sick and tired of it all. I just I may I, I maybe I just want to get rid of technology in my life, you know. And then today I had a uh, I had a uh, 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 my first medical uh, meeting online with my um, um, what do you call it, the uh, uh, neurologist. Uh, and I had never done this uh, telemedicine before. And it's kind of it's kind of neat, you know. I mean, I didn't have to go all the way up there to see him. And I was talking to him, and uh, we were talking about what's happening with the virus and all of that. And so I figured I'd maybe do a little segment of that tonight. So let's once again 
check in. Let's pl- we I did this week, made this weeks ago. Haven't used it in weeks now, but I think it's time to play it again because it's pretty desolate out there. gentlemen we thought we'd do our COVID update we haven't done it in a long while and i figured that we would and i think maybe one of the things we should probably do now is uh is go over to our map okay here's the map we haven't seen this in a while either we haven't been showing this to you because uh well, you know, I, 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 we, we were getting less interested in it here in New York because we have practically nothing going on where coronavirus is concerned. I mean, I would say that with the kind of uh, numbers we're coming down with now in New York, and I don't want to brag, this would be normal flu season, except that this flu is very pernicious. This flu is horribly deadly. But look. Worldwide, 12 and a, almost 12 and a half million people have gotten the COVID. In fact, it's probably over that because we're not counting everything, you know. Uh, and um, the global deaths now are at 559,439. See that there, folks? See that? You following that there? That's a big number worldwide. That's a, it's over half a million people dead. And of those, the United States is accounting for, let's go here to the United States. Um, we, we account, at this point, we're accounting for 3,182,385 of those uh, uh, cases. A- and the number of deaths in this country now, all right? 134,067. You know, uh, our president should be just ashamed of himself. Look at that number, folks. Look at it. Ah, You say, what's the president got to do with it? Well, the president has everything to do with it. I mean, he is our leadership in this country, and we don't have any right now at a time when we need it desperately. When we need it desperately. Uh, New, Jer- uh, New York still has the n- more deaths because we were started out front with 32,331. Behind us is New Jersey with uh, 15,479, 97 rather. Uh, then the Massachusetts is in third place and then uh, Illinois, California and so on. Uh, the deaths elsewhere are not as great as they were here because what happened here uh, was that we, um, uh, we, we, we got it first, you know, because this thing came over from, it came from Europe and attacked us, and, of course, our president was too busy trying to call it the Chinese flu and preventing people from China from coming into this country, which is all well and good, but he should have also realized that Europe was getting inundated with this virus, and it wasn't until May 15th, long after they started having their big attacks over there of the of COVID-19, did he decide he was going to close down the borders coming here. And by that time, three million people had come into New York City from elsewhere in the world where the, where the COVID was, was running rampant, just running rampant. And... Um, 
it, it devastated us. And, and besides devastating us, it did it at a time when we didn't know very much about this virus. We were only going under, uh, going under assumptions. We didn't know how you cured it, how you work with it, what you do for it, and so on. But our governor, who is a great governor, um, came up with a game plan. And that game plan uh, was that, you know, we had to do something about this and, and fast. Uh, let me, um, and so he started, uh, he just said, that we're closing everything down, you know, tighter than a cow's ass at fly time. I mean, we're, we just... We just stopped it, okay? Uh, dead in its tracks. And because we closed down everything and we told people to stay indoors, and if you go outside, wear a mask and socially distance, and the people of New York took it to heart, we took that down. And in a little bit, I'm going to tell you what the results are today. Uh, just want to go back to that, um, um, to the uh, uh, map for a second just so we can look and see that Brazil is in number two spot. Remember when we first left this, they only had about 400,000. Now they're up to 1,800,000. Uh, they could beat us out soon. Uh, India is in third place. Russia is in fourth place. Per then Peru, then Chile. I mean, these are countries that weren't even on the map several weeks ago that are now seeing huge spikes. And then the United Kingdom, Mexico, Spain, okay, uh, uh, Iran, okay. And uh, that's, uh, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Um, let me, I'm going to find something here. I've got to go look something up here. Let me close this down. There we go. And then I go over to the mail here. Every day we get a piece of mail from the governor. Uh, uh, let me uh, let me double click on this and make it come up like this so I can I can show it to you. Uh, there we go. There it is. We get a piece of mail from Mario Cuomo, uh, Andrew Cuomo, who's our governor. I keep saying Mario, uh, and he writes and and I thought this was wonderful. He writes. When New York was experiencing our worst days, we were moved by the generosity of states around the country. We promised we would pay that forward when other states were in need, and today we're doing just that. New York will deliver a shipment of the medication Remdesivir to Florida tomorrow as the state struggles with a surge of cases. Remdesivir is a drug that has shown promise in treating COVID patients um, we are 50 states, but we're not one country. Okay? Wow. Pretty nice, huh? I like him. I think he's just, he's swell. Okay? Uh, and uh, we're sending remdesivir to Florida. Uh, remdesivir lately, well, they've been saying that in the cases where remdesivir is being used, uh, it helps cure people with COVID about 60% of the time. So we're saving lives. Thank you. Thanks to our governor for doing that. Uh, he's opening up uh, malls, but he's not without them. They have to have something called HVAC systems, and they're required to have advanced filters that help filter out COVID-19 virus. Other, uh, there, so, so this is a filter that will filter out the COVID-19 virus and take about, I think, something like 99% of it out of the air. Right now, when you have air conditioning and it has filtration, it recirculates the air. And as you get the air that comes into it, it is then filtered as it goes out. Normally, they don't have heavy filters. They just have, you know, functional filters. Uh, he wants there to be filters in these things that will are known to be able to uh, 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 suck out COVID, okay, and and not recirculate it back into the air. Now here is the thing. I can't remember how many positive cases we had in this state 
uh, three months ago. But I'll tell you, it was nowhere near what it was yesterday. Yesterday, this state conducted, are you ready for this? 73,558 tests. And by the way, you want your information to get back to you about whether you're, you have COVID or not. You will, in, in most states now, it takes like a week. And, and, and uh, uh, our um, Dr. Fauci has said, uh, you know, if you can't get it back to people within a couple of days, it really doesn't do us any good, okay? Because by then, the person has gone out and infected his entire community. Uh, we did 73,558 tests, and you know why we can do that many and get the results back? Because here in the state of New York, we didn't wait for anybody else to make tests. We started making our own tests. And we got pharmacies and labs to all get in line so that now if you go in, Marjorie went in to get hers on a Monday, and on a Tuesday she had the results, okay? Try that in any other state. They are having, didn't even ramp up for this, but we did 75,558 tests. I would imagine that outstrips any other state by at least five times, and I may be, I may be over-optimistic about that on, for, on their side. Uh, of those tests, 786 or 1.06% were positive. Now, are you ready for that? There are states where 25% of the uh, results coming back show that people have COVID. Ours isn't 25%. Ours is 1.08%. All right? Uh, then, um, unfortunately, he always says unfortunately, although we're kind of happy with this number, eight New Yorkers died of the virus yesterday. Eight. Now compare that to where it was, okay, about three months ago. Do you remember what it was? I'll tell you, it was 800. We've gone down a hundred fold. And we've opened up and we're in phase four in certain parts of the state, phase two, I think in, in, in most of the state. I think we're phase three here in New York now. Yeah, without the opening of restaurants. They, the restaurants for in, in, uh, in restaurant eating are, is not yet allowed. Outdoor seating is allowed, okay. However, today we had a, where did my voice go there? We, we had a, um, a, a, what do you call it, a, a, a tropical storm. So, you know, sidewalk eating wasn't in the plan. But uh, the fact is that uh, only eight New Yorkers died. And we actually had it go as low as five. I don't think we're ever going to see zero. Uh, that I don't think we're going to see. But we have literally, in this state, not eradicated, but come close to eradicating COVID. Why can't, why couldn't the rest of the country do that? Why doesn't the rest of the country say, let's call up the people in New York and have them come out here and help us with this whole thing? Because they apparently know what they're doing. And all we're doing is we believe in science and we believe in data. And that's what's driven our whole, our whole plan for solving this problem. And, you know, my God, do I love Andrew Cuomo. I mean, I'm going to love anybody who, because I'm in the target group, has saved my life. All right? You would, too. He's opening up the Brooklyn Zoo again. Um, uh, 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 the West Games area at Jones Beach is now open. Um, so those are some of the things that are happening. And, oh, by the way, he's letting people go back into nursing homes. But they have to be, the temperature has to be taken, and they have to have social distance, they have to have masks on, but they can go see their loved ones in the, uh, in the nursing home. So we are in pretty good shape right now. Now, the only, the only caveat to that is, is that all those idiots out there who are, uh, uh, getting it in other states and then might come here might, might reinfect us, okay? But the infection going on out there right now is just horrid. It is just horrible. 
And I talked to my neurologist today, and he's at Mount Sinai. And I wondered, you know, what he was doing and how it was faring for him. And his whole thing was, he said, uh, you know, he said, he said, you come to Mount Sinai right now, we virtually have almost no COVID patients in here. See, you got to remember that when we say that uh, 800 people uh, have COVID, just got COVID in the last 24 hours, we have 300 hospitals in New York State. So that averages out to how many per hospital. He said, you come to Mount Sinai now, where it was a war zone weeks ago. He said, it's now pretty much back to normal. So anyway, that was his, uh, his whole take on the thing. And uh, I, just, I'm, I, just, I just wish everybody would listen to what we're doing here in New York and pay attention to it and, uh, and, and get in line because, you know, and I'm so proud of our governor for saying, hey, I'm sending remdesivir to Florida. So there he goes, saving some more lives. I love the guy. I absolutely love him. Well, it's time now to go over and check our, uh, our, um, uh, our, our Zoom panel, get it started. Uh, let me see here. Let me, um, let me go to the Zoom panel. There we go, and there we have Phil. Hello, Phil. Hey, good evening. How are you? All right. Oh, that's yeah. uh, the Punchline uh, T-shirt from the ball games. No. No, oh, no, it was for a Comedy New Year's uh, show. New Year's show. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, the um, uh, it, it's really uh, you know it's amazing what we've done here in New York and how we're maintaining it. You know, uh, in spite of the fact that all around us it's like you know we're, most of the country's infected now. Something like how many thirty six states? More than that, actually, are uh, are are uh, in in the. Uh, in the pipeline for, for being really dangerous. And you know. the uh, new strain, uh, z- they turn into zombies. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's not funny, Phil. People are dying. We're dying. They're dying out there. This is, this is fucking dangerous. Yeah. yeah. The sky is falling. I understand. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Phil, Phil, are you going to dismiss it that way? Are you really going to do that? Are you really going to go there? He has you to. Know, every single day, the news media, you and everyone else is talking gloom and doom, gloom and doom. What, I'm what sorry. do you call 133,000 deaths, Phil? What about, do you call less deaths? Oh, uh, get, get, that's bullshit, how Phil. About, how about 33% of um, Miami County is infected? Yeah. And, uh, and they're younger kids who didn't do what and they're they also supposed. older people who are getting it now because you know miami beach grandma lives in miami beach not anymore south beach is all uh you know upscale uh nightclubs don't try and dismiss this phil you know hey i'm you know i'm just tired of the pessimism oh i see okay well it's wonderful and it's all going to be over in a week it's just like a bad cold okay you happy now you happy now yeah, uh, it may not yeah. be over, okay. but you know okay. you got to look for the bright side in things. The bright side in things is that for the first time, all lit up, we see Rob's studio. That's a proper radio studio you've got for you going I've got there. That baffles. Yeah. Huh? The baffles. Oh, these behind me. Yeah. I've had those. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I used to actually have the this whole thing facing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I t- when I took this all apart and moved everything around, I used to face that wall. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a studio at Sirius XM. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. Nice. I got all the stuff there. You, you're up and running. Oh, man. You, you, you're in good shape. That, a, that light, is that an Artimity Tissio lamp? Oh, God. Why do you have to uh, go with uh, that? Yeah. You know, is that a Tissio? You bore me with that shit. I don't know. I got this from... Sharper image, years and years and really? years Tell ago. Me that, was it about $200? Oh God, no. I, get, I, get I wouldn't have paid $200 for it. You want, no? you want to bore all of us to death, Phil? <laughs> Got a little halogen bulb? Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, I, that's a Tissio, and if it's not a Tissio, it's a knockoff. Artimity is a very uh, upscale Italian lighting firm. So I didn't pay that so kind of money for it. Did for we, sure. just, we just wasted five minutes here on your, what kind of fucking lamp is that? Hey, you know, 
Mr. Pessimism. <laughs> you don't you don't want to learn anything. Wait a minute. Am I am I pessimistic? How can you be optimistic when the two highest days of infections were yesterday and today? Well, that means tomorrow could be better. It could be higher too. It could. That makes these even better. Because they're lower. It's just it's going the wrong way, Phil. It's going the wrong way. You got you know you got to realize you know our our boy here uh, I don't mean that in any derogatory way Charlie our our boy here Charlie Wallace is in Texas he is in Austin which is the ground zero for covid yeah. mm-hmm. every hospital his life is, is on the line if he even goes outdoors right now and if you call that pessimism I call that being smart well he's he's doing what he needs to do Damn you right. know and those that didn't that may Phil, get why do you insist on sounding? So, why do you insist on sounding so fucking stupid? Uh, I don't. I think that it's stupid to uh, cause people to lose their their rights. You, what you want to do is you want to take things away. People have their the ability to decide. Wait a minute. How wait, much wait, risk wait, wait, wait a minute. What what right, they Phil? Have, the right to kill? The, the right, right to right. endanger my life? Well, if you think your life's in danger, then you stay inside. But you know, Bill, you know, hey, I, hey, I, 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 I have the right to finish this big glass of scotch, and I want to drive somewhere. I have the right to do that. No, you don't. Because why? The What's the difference? Uh, there's a big difference. The no, difference I don't see it that way. Tell me it's where in the Constitution it says you you have the right not to wear a mask. It doesn't say anywhere in the Constitution that you have to wear a mask either. This doesn't say anything in the Constitution that I can't have this glass of scotch and get in my car. No, but the code <coughs> says it, that there's something about it. Okay, that so if the governor you accept that, you know, I mean, right? Because it's for the betterment of the population that I don't get in the car after I finish this glass. Yes, it's the same but thing. You're not going to run into somebody, Phil. Phil in the old without- days, when uh, there were people running around mm-hmm. and uh, they had AIDS. And they didn't pay attention to it and still had sex with people. Uh, they charged some of them occasionally with murder. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think that was right? Uh, yes. Okay, well, then it's right to charge them with murder now if they have COVID and don't wear a mask. No. How many? If, if you're politicizing you're, uh, it, Phil. yourself. You're, you're politicizing Other it. people uh, uh, are in places where they're not wearing Phil, masks. Phil, you're, giving the me, chance you're, giving me, you're giving me Phil, a, you're politicizing this. Yeah, yeah I'm, you're, I'm poli- politicizing. You're, 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 you're politicizing it. The rest you're politicizing. of you are. No. Because you, you understand that you shouldn't go out and drink and drive, and you understand that if you have AIDS, you shouldn't, you should be able to be put, you know, you should be able to pay a penalty if you don't tell people and you sleep with them and you can conf- you and infect them it's the same thing it's just that this is so political right now and because it's against your guy you're seeing it as a political well, no, thing if you know you have covid you're supposed to be quarantined and stay in but if you don't have covid but, the, or you you know, know, but they're DJ not doing LeMahieu. that phil they're not doing that dj oh. lemayhew a new york yankee has covid yeah. he found out from a test he hasn't got one symptom right he's fine and, he can play yeah. baseball you know, uh, it's you have you can't leave yourself uh, quarantined like that mm. forever. If you know you're not infected, and uh, how if do you, you know? Well, then you're going to have to go out and get a test. Now they're they're giving tests to people that don't have symptoms. Have you had a test? Phil? Out in Texas, they are. They don't have enough tests. Yes, well, talk to Brian. Yes, Brian. But Phil. Yeah. But Phil. But Phil, <laughs> how many deaths this month? Do you think we need to have till Trump says something about it? What do you mean? What what I mean, if we if, if we start if we start escalating pretty quickly, is he going to say something about it or is he going to keep ignoring it? Last thing I heard, he said it would be a good idea to wear a mask. Uh, uh, he, he says everything all the thing, time. Yeah. He's yeah. You have no mind. idea. There's no national plan. Never has been. Never will be. The whole country can catch it and die. Now, as long as Trump is safe, he doesn't care. The rest of the world is experiencing this too. Is that Trump's fault? Not to the extent we are now. Oh yeah. Nobody. Is, I'm, I feel much safer here. Yeah. Well, things go in wave. Has been hit as hard as us. I, is, I uh, just think I just think it was a big shame that we were so going the right direction with New York, even ahead of New York, and then you know, open our leader. Up. Our leader uh, doesn't. Who, who is the thing? Who, really who's, who's Trump? Trump? 
Does Who Trump have any uh, properties where Phil lives? What? I want to get Phil. He I want to get a lot you of a contract. Phil. I want to get no, you a the, contract. He doesn't have anything in uh, in. Uh, that's unfortunate. I want to get a contract for you from him. He, you deserve it, and then I want to see what happens. Well, what do you What do you mean? I I've read so many reports that he stiffs he stiffs people. Yep. You know, like he ordered pianos. They all go in and. You know, and then he doesn't pay the bill. I think the only way that you're affected is if he does, if something negative affects you directly. You know, do you know why, by the way, you know why he does? I, well, you you know, shut up, Phil. I'm talking. I'm talking. I, I was I'm talking. I don't care if you were having a conversation. Uh, I don't like being yelled at. And if you're going to yell at me, you're going to have to do your thing. Well, if you with, can't, if you can't engage in a discussion without, uh, without dominating it, then fine. What do you mean? I got eight people trying to take a piece you, of it. Phil, that Evan. doesn't mean you get to dominate the conversation. Okay. And the only reason they're going after you is because you say something and then they react to it. Good. What's wrong with that? What, and what's and wrong with mean, it you is... You can be told to shut up. That, that is the last time you're going to tell me that. You either show me some respect... And I'll sh uh, if you, and, you know, show these people respect, I will show you respect. I do show them respect, but I'll show them even more. But I don't want to be told to shut up. That's the last time you're going to do that. Oh, really? Yeah. You, you, we either have uh, some mutual respect. You know, I, if you're talking, I can understand you say, hey, Phil, I want to finish this point. I'm talking. But shut up is not going to ha It's not going to happen. Yes, it will. Well, and if that's what you want. Try it again. What are you going to do? I'll just hang up. Well, do you think that's going to hurt the show? No, but it, it, okay. I, don't, I don't need it. Huh? I don't really care. You know, I don't care. I don't want to be told to shut up. I think that's Well, why not, we won't tell you to shut up if you shut up. All right. Then I'll fucking mute it. How's that? Yeah, go fucking mute it. Um, you were wanted to say something, Brian, and I noticed you had your hand up, but, you know. It, it's, uh, I forgot it, now. You forgot. See, that's what happens. <laughs> that's what drives me crazy is when I'm trying to think. I have something I want to say, and then, you know. But, oh, the thing about the pianos, uh, he got that from Roy Cohn. Roy Cohn never paid for anything. He would order stuff, he would buy stuff, and then he says, yeah, you don't pay for it. You know, let them come after you. And and he got that whole way of operating from Roy Cohn. It was out of Roy Cohn's playbook, you know. Um, See, the, the the thing is, is that I I uh, I didn't mind Trump winning the election. I had I had hopes that he could turn it around. That he maybe he could. He was a television star, you know. I thought he'd like ratings, so he would do what was popular. But then, you know, he found where the power lies to play politics. And he kind of pushes that button a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I, I have to say it again, I'm not a never Trumper, but it's become so absurd now that you have this pandemic and there's no national plan. There never has been, there never will be. It's, it's just, it just boggles my mind that he, that he couldn't set forth a plan, an action plan for the country. And so now, here we are, how many months later, and there's still no plan, and it's growing worse. I, I just don't understand. Well, it. I think that's the big problem, is that there has been no plan. Uh, you know, I, the thing that got me is we solved the problem here in New York, or at least we grabbed the bull by the horns, we took the... Uh, the uh, mountain and we turned it into a it, it turned it the other way and came down the other side slowly but we came down we showed america the way to do it andrew cuomo showed america the way to do it i don't hear very many people talking about the new york model you know which it was was a methodical scientific data driven model he didn't close anything until the data showed you need to, and he didn't open it up till he saw you could. And he talks about it like being a valve, and he turn it on a little bit, and you see what happens over here. And if everything's fine over here, you open it up a little bit more. Yes, Charlie. 
And that's the point I was trying to make is that uh, anybody who believes in science and believes in reality, the first thing out of their mind that they really care about the American people is we need everybody, to, every state to do what New York State did. Did you hear what uh, uh, Dr. Fauci said when they asked him when was the last time you met with Donald Trump? Mm. Yeah, two, April. Two months ago. Yeah, April. Mm. You would think that Trump would, you know, want to hear what Fauci has to say. Not the news isn't good. And, and he, he hasn't been. He hasn't, hmm? Yeah, he hasn't been on that pandemic task force. He hasn't checked in with them at all for two months he said he said he hasn't done the task force either i mean i i heard that they met and he was yeah. there yeah no they said he hadn't been there for, uh, for two months but he's been golfing a couple times who trump oh trump yeah but i i oh you uh, mean trump says he hasn't met with him in two months no they were saying oh. that yeah the, the pandemic task force has been meeting but he hasn't checked in with them mm -hmm. so he hasn't seen what's going on or getting any updates from them yeah yeah. Yeah. Hello, Tony. How are you? Two months. I just heard you say that. Two months. <laughs> you know how many people died in those two months? That, well, see, I don't know I it, two fucking months? Two months. Why uh, do you even have them on his staff? Well, I mean, uh, who knows? You know, I mean. Um, All I want is a plan. That's, yeah. you know, I, I just don't understand that. <clears throat> I mean, that's all I'm asking for. Just Couldn't a, there have been a plan? Mm -hmm. There should have been a plan. And, and even, and I know Phil's argument saying that, well, he's not responsible, but he's the leader. Mm -hmm. it, well, it's like me saying, well, well, you know, you know, something happened on the manufacturing lines. And, oh, well, you know, I, I had nothing to do with it. I wasn't there that day. But overall, I'm the leader. I have to show that leadership. And what? that's what anyone wanting to be president right. would do. In that well, yes, Jeff. All, all the president had to say was, listen, in every other state, New York did a certain st strategy, and it worked. If yeah. you guys don't want to get sick, do the same thing they did in New York. Because he's playing politics and politics only. No, and if that were a red state and they did it, he'd call it out. He's really playing with killing people. He, he, there's a, I read an article this morning. I first woke up and, and, and basically I copied the text here. This is about Trump just saying that he's going to wear a mask, right? The, you know, finally they convinced him to. And he said the reason he resisted was in part because he's tested daily and views it as unnecessary, but also because He's not wanted to give in to media criticism and pressure. And here's an exact quote. I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. More about the politics of it than doing the right thing because people should wear a mask. And if he told his followers to wear a mask, they get behind it. But it's not about that. It's about what suits his purpose politics, politically. You know, uh, uh, Cuomo said when he closes down stuff, he said... If anybody, I said, is, if the police department gets some, some heat from some people because they tell some people to wear masks or pass out a ticket for wearing masks, he said, just blame me. He said, you know, I'll take the heat. You know, I'll, I'll, I, 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 I'm responsible for this. And um, he's, he wasn't afraid to take unpopular stands because he says, I'm not running for anything and I don't want to do anything except keep you people alive. It's really what it's all about. And he said, this virus is not political. It doesn't take political prisoners, you know. And there are people who are making it political. And I know that Donald Trump is worried because uh, these people are, uh, because this thing is, is causing a lot of problems, but he doesn't want to take any kind of action that he has to take, like, Everybody wear masks. This is a, an executive order. You must wear a mask because he's worried about the election. Well, he shouldn't worry about the election. He should worry about whether Jeff is still alive or Phil is still alive or I am still alive or, or any of us, quite a few of us here are compromised uh, 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 medically. Um, he should worry about his health. If he catches it. If he, it 
if he, all he, the last presidents yeah. all jogging yeah. Clinton. Yeah. 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 Well, the thing is, wait a minute, let, me, let me just say something quickly, Tony, yeah. and then we'll get to you. Uh, uh, the fact of the matter is that if Trump gets it, he's a dead man. <clears throat> I mean, he, he has comorbidity up the fucking ass. Yes, Tony. You know what happened today? My brother took me to the bank today, and I was going to tell you this too when I called in. So on the way home, we went to a little delicatessen because my mom likes the potato salad there. So I go in. He's waiting for me, right? Mm -hmm. I go in. Alex, I put my order in fast because I always go in there, and I walk the pay. It's a small store. One guy walks in, right? Mm -hmm. No mask. <laughs> Comes walking right over to me when I'm paying. I turn, and I was this close to saying, can you put a fucking mask on? I was going to tell him, can you get away from me? I was, when I go back into that store, I'm going to tell you what. I know the guy a long time. I said, listen, Frank. You know, I've been coming here a long time. You should, you can't be letting him in with no mask. I had a mask, I turned, and I turned my body over. Now, as soon as I see that, that annoys me now. Because it's like, I just did my COVID test. I don't want to kill my mother or anybody else because it is fucking asshole. And I'm seeing him a lot by my house. But you know something, it, 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 and you're absolutely right. I mean, you've got a mother at home who's not well, okay? Um, or at least that's what you're telling the authorities yeah. so you can get it's a check. salary, too. Yeah, uh, yeah true. but if you if you get sick because of this guy at the bank and then yeah. you give it to your mother, you know, uh, th these people are playing with your lives. And, and I turn my back to him. Like, I turn like that. I have my mask over my nose. And I don't give a shit. I was like, you know what? Get out of my fucking way, you loser. Really. Yeah, I mean. They no side. They don't care. And I was getting soaked anyway. But you know what? I don't have a bad temper, but I'm getting tired of these assholes, really. I well, really I heard I heard some woman go, I've got a constitutional right not to wear a mask. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't know where that's written. I'm sorry. Uh, you I know. wish the cops would give them tickets and enforce the law, like he well, said for them. Well, I, I, I think they should. You know. Alex, if they gave tickets in my area, in Queens, they'd be making listen, money to see Listen, like I'm the first to say that one of the reasons I didn't go out the last couple of days has been a, it's been 90 degrees here. And I know that if I wear a mask, it's going to be doubly... Oh. Yeah. Horrible, yeah. but it's something we've got to do. This is important, you know. And uh, and Phil, if you want to join in anywhere along the line here, please feel yeah, free to do I so. Hate the -mask is but it, you know, all we're saying is we're trying to save lives here. This has no, I, you know, it's it. You know, you can't say I'm a I'm a Republican, so I'm with the president. I'm not wearing a mask. It's not a political issue. I think that's how I see it. When I see them without a mask, I'm like, oh, this is what we're doing. And with. I think I think what Trump has done is politicize COVID uh, because he's he and he's got to hold his he's got to hold his rallies. You know, it turns out now that little rally in Tulsa became a real petri dish. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the uh, didn't he do, where did he do something else that all of a sudden the uh, uh, Arizona Arizona yeah so. I mean, he, he, as a president, what you are is you're an example to other people. You know, how baseball players say, "I've got to be a good baseball player because I have to be a, a good baseball player role as model. a representative to the kids." Okay, the youth of America. Role model. Well, they a role model. Since 1948. Well, what I'm saying, well, they, the fact that they're not role models is is the problem. But uh, you know, they used to be. I mean, Babe Ruth, a role model. Uh, uh, drinking with prostitutes. Huh? Oh, shit. Yeah. Shecky said he read his book. He was with prostitutes. Yeah, but you know the thing about. I saw a thing on on Babe Ruth. Yes, he he did prostitutes, and yes, he drank a lot, and he ate a lot, and he did all that. But he also did a lot for charity. He did. Yeah, he, he did a lot for kids. He loved kids, and he gave to kids charities and spent a fortune on them. But the point I'm making is, is that, come on, this is this has nothing to do with politics. And uh, it, it, the, the one thing he should know is that this is testing him in a way that he probably would not have been tested otherwise. And that is, this is his audition. This is his audition for the job, and he's not doing very good at the audition. He's screwing it up. Yeah, he's screwing it up. This could have won him another four yeah. years without even breathing heavy just by caring. Yeah, that, I feel he's right about that, Alex. If he would have showed a human, even if he, he can't act that, Alex, he can't just say, listen, 
Trump, just go on. We know you're an asshole, but can you just pull this roller for us? Uh, I'll like I don't is. care if he doesn't care. I oh, only care on. about what he does. And really? and as far as I'm concerned, he got the PPP. He, uh, but, but he, he didn't, got, obviously, because the states like Arizona are screaming they don't have enough PPE. They, they have uh, plenty in their stockpile that will go there. Then why well, don't they? Then they why aren't they getting it? All they have to do is ask. I'm sure they have. <laughs> well, then they'll send it. Well, they and haven't I'm, gotten it, you Phil. You have uh, I don't know how many uh, of those respirators. Uh, ink, 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 what do they call them? We sent them all to Venezuela. Ventilators. No, no, no. They've got a stockpile of thousands of them. Ventilators. Uh, and gloves and masks. Well, well, and, but uh, Phil, they, they are not getting the gloves and masks. Why are they complaining masks. they don't have them then? Yeah, they have uh, them. You know, I think that, uh, I don't know if, I don't think it's political because Arizona's got a Republican uh, right. governor. Yeah, right. then why? But the, feel, hmm? the feeling is still that. But I, I don't uh, know uh, that they're not, that they're complaining uh, that they're not getting it because I'm not hearing that in the news. I don't know where the, you are. I'm hearing it. From. Just yeah. two hours yeah. ago. Well, maybe you heard it six months ago or, th or four yeah. months. Two hours ago. No, we heard. How about but, but the feeling is, it's still okay that the hospitals are maxed out. It seems like, well, nobody's dying. If their claim is nobody's dying, it's still okay for the for the hospitals to be maxed out. The doctors, the nurses, now they're doing their twelve-hour shifts. If if not even longer now, now all these places are being stretched again, and we were going out of this. That's the whole thing that started depressing is we were right. getting out of the clear, and now we had pool parties and, and all these yeah. other things going on. You have to blame the people. You can't blame Trump. He's, you know, you have free but He's will. the leader. It he's, doesn't he's, matter. He's, he's the role system. model. Open everything Phil. up. You so wouldn't Phil. listen to what he says. He no. has influence. He's he's the big on the other side of the rainbow. Phil, so I wouldn't, the but influence. Influence. Everybody, 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 one at a time. Yes, Rob. If you can't blame the president, then you can't, I, I, take a place like New York. The reason why New York did as well as it did was because of the leadership, because people listened to what he's had to <clears throat> Cuomo had to say. That's not coming from uh -huh. more than that, more than that. And I heard those speeches every single day. Yeah, he, wait a minute. Let me finish, Phil. He inspired us. He inspired us. He gave us a pep talk every day uh, and gave us the reasons why we should be doing this. And he gave us a goal. He's we got to take this hill and we got to just flatten it and bring it down. And if he uh, took a leadership position. He was late to the table by about two weeks and he admits it. He admits it, something Trump would never admit, but he admitted it, and he said he was too, if he had done it two weeks earlier, he could have maybe saved 10,000 lives. Instead, he was late to the party by two weeks. But once he got in, he was in for everything. He was what, in with both feet. What state has the highest uh, number of COVID deaths? Right now? Yeah. Uh, right now, for, since the beginning of COVID. Oh, oh since the beginning. We, we, what state had the most people coming in with COVID to their state? Uh, it's not a question. To no, a question. Phil, I think the question yeah, should be, the question York, should be. That's where April. He's trying to say Cuomo took it, 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 Phil, which, which, Phil uh, deaths here in the state of New York yesterday, eight people. Right. But how many compared to the total number of deaths it's something in the US. like i don't know 29 no, that doesn't matter. it doesn't matter it's not matter. Have ways to it doesn't matter to you no but phil it doesn't matter not, to you no no, no you're not you being ain't phil, so good. Phil, you're, you're not being fair because you're fair right? uh, 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 look, I'm trying to say when, when covid program. first came <laughs> nobody knew what was happening that, nobody yeah. knew how to treat it nobody knew anything about it they have learned a lot since they have learned that they different learned ways, before. like putting patients on their stomachs and doing the blood transfusion thing versus the um, the ventilators, the, you know, uh, intubating them with the ventilators. They have learned so many different ways of keeping people alive today that's different. You can't compare it. That's not the same. You could say it because it's political yeah, to say it, but it's that's got it, it's. But no, it's, it early, but it yeah. does, it's not I'm, germane to the discussion. Yeah, but you you tout this guy as the best thing since sliced yes. bread. But on the other hand, he's got the most amount of deaths. Phil, and Phil, because mm, he was you know, he, Phil, Phil, be fair. Be he's fair. The largest be state. fair. The, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got 3,000 people that came to the, through uh, the two airports here in New York City in the month and a half 
the two months between the closing of, the, of China and then finally the closing of Europe. In that time, three million travelers from Europe, which was inundated oh. with this COVID, came into, into New York. Be fair, Phil. That I was a f- wildfire, an absolute Every wildfire. Scene. Every single state would want to be in the situation New York is in right now. Think about that, three million people. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. And everybody should remember that the first thing the president said, that it's, in about three days, it's all going to be gone. Yeah, it's going to blow away. Yeah, it's just a bad yeah. cold. Isn't that what Fauci said in uh, no, Fauci February? It doesn't. And in early February? No. Fauci no. said that uh, you don't need to wear masks, that it doesn't He did say that. He did, uh, he did say that, Phil. Okay. But, but wait a minute. Hold on a second, Phil. Be fair. Times change. The game changes. You change with it if you're smart. And he changed with it. He saw that it was going to be terrible, and he started saying that, all right? But in the beginning, it didn't look like that to him because he was working on the best information he has had available to him. The fact that he could change his mind is what's important. And if Trump could do the same thing, a lot more people would be alive today. Okay, so first Trump uh, closes China, thinking that the stuff was coming from China. Uh, a couple weeks later, they realized that it's now coming Not a from couple of Europe. weeks. Three, and he closed Europe. Three and, million and travelers later, Asia. Phil. He was, he, was, he was late doing it. They, they get a million travelers a day going through those places. Mm. You know, the, the thing is... No, we don't uh, get a million people a once, day going through. Once, once we got the information that uh, you had to close down Europe, he did. But the information he was working on, even when he closed down China, was that it Phil, doesn't. Phil, doesn't it seem to? to doesn't it? If you see that in uh, February, there's a sudden explosion in COVID in Europe. Isn't that the time to close it down? Uh, when he saw the explosion, he closed it down. No, no. no he didn't. He didn't close it down. He didn't close later. it down for a month and a half after the explosion in Europe. Uh, being the day. fact is, the explosion in Europe was worse than what happened in China and Wuhan. What happened is people slow, left Wuhan. A people, slow learner. Yeah, he's a slow learner. The fact is... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin, you've been quiet tonight. Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> you've been quiet. You're back from vacation. You've been, uh, Kevin, kind of a... Quiet night tonight. Any opinion about this? Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to hear it though. Oh, I want to <laughs> hear it. I want to hear it, Kevin. I, uh, you know. No, it's pretty much the same. I've been up in Portland, and uh, it's been pretty interesting up there as well. Really? How's it? How's it going there? <clears throat> well, it's interesting because I, I ended up in the hospital actually up there when I was there. Ooh, why? Wow. Oh, I, I had an accident and uh, had my leg cut open and ended up in ER, but it was pretty interesting. Ooh. Interesting uh, in what respect? Because the hospital was filled with COVID people? No, there was no one in there. Oh, really? Yeah. And they were all set up for it and everything. And I was talking to the doctor up there and a real nice doctor as he was sewing up my leg. And... Uh, he talked about how this, he didn't think that this was going to be the first one. He thought about this is only the beginning. Well, and, uh, China is seeing what they call their third wave already. Yeah. You know, in, well, he was talking about, uh, you know, an initial pandemic and probably another one coming okay. on, probably yeah. next year or so, because this is just a, uh, a warm up, as it would say. And it, it was you know, the, where's the scientific information behind that? Where did he, you know, what is he basing that on? Well, he was basing it just on his scientific whatever, you know, uh, because of, because of, you know, I didn't talk to him that long. He was sewing up my leg. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he said that the, the fact that we weren't prepared for this and we're not handling it well doesn't help the situation. And that uh, the, it was, a, there was a little bit of politics talking there you know i was there for about an hour getting sewn up and, and uh he was in and out but 
he, he was he has had a pretty interesting talk about it. I talked about you know the documentary I I looked at and he talked about that and uh, it was interesting and there was a lot of uh, up there the 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 attitude is very I felt it was fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of flag waving rednecks running around in in pickup trucks and they don't want to do shit. And then there's a lot of liberals up there saying, you know, let's do shit. And there was in Portland, there was a, well, it was more black lives matter, but there was a a riot every night in Portland and the statues were coming down and there was fires at the federal buildings and everything every single night, which I thought was kind of interesting because it didn't seem like there was anything else going on around the country. Mm-hmm. How did you cut your leg? I was at Home Depot and uh, went in to get a tube of glue, and somebody creeped up behind me uh, in line, and they had a eight foot piece of strut on their cart. Uh, oh boy, steel oh, strut, and they kept to their six foot distance, and their strut was eight foot, and yeah. I made a U turn to go into a non. You know, the line was, the guy was having a credit card problem in aisle 12. So I went over, I wanted to turn and go to aisle 11. I didn't know the guy snuck up behind me and turned around and sliced open my leg. Oh, boy. And, uh, yeah, it was a murder scene. Ooh, yeah. when, and, when's, uh, the it, blood spurted across the leg. I didn't oh, feel it. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't feel it at all. That's all right. Oh, boy. Hold on a second. I'm just but getting a You know what? Thing. God bless the guy that reached over and told me I was bleeding yes. and then threw me down on the ground and clamped his hand on my leg Wow! in a wow. pandemic. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He just grabbed my leg and said, you're bleeding, dude, lay down. Ooh. He clamped onto my leg with a bare hand. Yeah. I was a little worried about that, but, you know, and yeah. then it just turned out that there was an ER nurse, an ER trauma nurse working at Home Depot, so she came over and took over, but fire department showed up and they wanted to take me away in an ambulance and all that bullshit and you're on vacation well, it wasn't a vacation i went up to see my buddy's family that had passed away last year so. oh okay who pays for that kevin huh who pays for that uh my insurance company <clears throat> discount on, on the phone at home depot yesterday they called me to see how i was doing and basically uh Wanted to write me a hundred dollar check to shut up and go away. Hundred dollars? Hundred dollars? I I I, no. I I think they'd be buying you cheap. It was Did like it was like an accident that happened in the parking lot. She says yeah. that has to do with you and the guy. They're like five thousand minimum. Did, the guy that ran you, into me. Kevin, did, did they let you keep the glue? Oh yeah, she gave me the glue for nothing. <laughs> On the house, <laughs> complimentary. Yeah. 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 Um, hello, hello, back. hello, Patrick. <laughs> Hi. Hi. But anyway, that was it was an exciting trip. How's everything in Wisconsin? Are you guys uh, you, how are you guys doing with the uh, COVID? It's fine. I mean, there's only like 200 I'm not giving her I'm not giving her the topper today. What? Yeah, there's only like 250 people that are in the hospital and it yeah, it's it really not a big deal the, the issue that we're having are the ninnies that want to uh, enforce a, a mask rule when you go out in public well I got fucking news for them uh, I'm not wearing a mask to sit on my fucking porch so they can come arrest me down well I don't think you should have to wear a mask sitting on your porch uh, because you're not you, you know here's the reason you wear a mask Mask is used if you're not social distancing. In other words, if you're not keeping a social distance, then you should wear a mask. Uh, And so in situations where uh, social distancing might become more difficult, you should wear a mask. Uh, If you're walking down the street, you're going to walk past some people, so you better wear a mask because they're going to be within six feet of you. But if you're sitting on your back porch, come on, you know. I mean, um, but they, they're they're insisting. I mean, that we've got some real clowns that are running this, the the county here, and it's like you know, this is not Stalinist Russia right now. So why don't we just fucking ease up a little bit? 
And, um, you know, I'm all for wearing the mask where it's needed. Uh, you know, if a company says they want it there, that's fine. Yeah. And I can make a decision whether or not I want to go to that place. And um, they have every right to require me to have a mask. If it's a private business, that's their right. And I got a right to go somewhere else. And the other thing I find funny are the people that drive with masks on. Who the fuck are you protecting? Yeah, I, that would seem to be... It, well, uh, they're they're well, uh, they're ridiculous. Thanks. Are they alone in the car? Well, that's a good point. Yeah, think about that like though. It. But that doesn't okay. hurt anybody. I don't care if they want to wear a mask. It's not necessary. Yeah, you don't deal. know the situation. You don't know the situation. It could be two things. It could be one. It could be an Uber guy. Mm -hmm. Or when I got off the plane, my eighty-year-old mother-in-law picked us up, and we wore our masks all the way back. Right. To the yeah. to the house because I didn't want to contaminate her from being on yeah. the flying petri dish either. And then you were also in a car. We were I, in I, a I, car I, and we were on an airplane for an hour and a half. <laughs> no, so it, I didn't want to have any chance of getting her sick. So I, I, single I kept my mask on and so did my daughter and my my wife. What'd you say, Phil? I said I see single drivers all the time wearing a mask, uh, windows up. Uh, it doesn't say Uber or Lyft on their uh, car. Yeah. And, well, and you know, some of those people driving, don't put Uber or Lyft on their cars well, either. And, 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 if, and if you're driving, uh, you're going to drive for Uber or Lyft. If a, you're going to pick up a passenger before you pick them up, you put the mask on. You know, uh, I. Yeah, but I, you also, you're also driving around and, and with the windows up and there's crap flying around in the car. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of choice. You know, drive with a, in the car, who cares? Yeah, funny, yes, though. Charlie. They are kind of goofy, but, you know. <laughs> My feeling about that is it doesn't hurt anybody to wear a mask when it's not necessary. Yeah. What hurts people is when you don't wear a mask when it is necessary. Right. I agree. So I, I agree with that. I, I just find it funny when I see people out there yeah. wearing a mask and they're the only one in the car. And, I mean, you you guys are right. It could be Uber. It could be any of that. But I just find it funny because... I have a hard enough time breathing through this fucking thing yeah. to begin with. Yeah. Why would I have it in my car when I don't need it? So I would hope that it's a necessity like you, uh, Kevin, with, you know, with family or whatever. So, yeah, I walk out, I walk out of the store and that sucker's off and going into the dashboard. But, but, but Cuomo, Cuomo had a very funny bit he did a couple of weeks ago where he said, listen, everybody, these are not chin guards. Oh, yeah. You know, he says, I see people walking around with them, using them as chin guards. He said, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it doesn't work. It, and, and putting it just over your mouth doesn't work. You need to put it over your nose, you know. If you're going to wear it, wear it correctly. Um, uh, but what I see in my neighborhood, and I've mentioned this before, is I live in a predominantly black neighborhood, so I can only speak for the blacks in this neighborhood, but I would say 75% of them weren't wearing masks. And I just was looking for the one who was also wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt because I don't see how you can believe that Black Lives Matter and not wear a mask. You know? It just sure. seems to be out of uh, place. Charlie, uh, wait a minute. Can, uh, I, yeah. can I mention something about the timeline that we were talking about earlier, or is that over? What time? Charlie had his hand up for a while, though. Yeah, yeah uh, Charlie had his hand up. Who? Who? I was just going to say that uh, one reason not to take your mask off is one time I went, I got in the car. Once I got in the car, I took the mask off. And then when I got to the store and I wanted to put the mask back on, the strap broke. So I had to go all the way back home and get another mask. <clears throat> so that's one reason I don't take the mask off in the car. Well, that's Once why, it's on, yeah. it's staying on until I'm back home. Well, that's why I always wore two condoms at a time, just in case <laughs> one broke. You know. Um, okay. Talking about that, Charlie, I, I, had a, I have a, a box of masks at my sales counter. And I uh, had a customer today come in, and his ma the things on his ears were so tight, they were pulling his ears forward. So I said, hey, would you like a, a, a new mask? And, uh, and I, he said, yeah. So I, I give him a mask, and uh, he was happier, and uh, you know, life went on. Uh, the, the reason I was going to say something about mm -hmm. the timeline is, Alex, how long 
was it that you said after he closed down China uh, or and we had our first cases in the United States? How long after that did he close down Europe? About a month and a half. I'm sorry, that's not right. No, it is right. Uh, I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, you when know. he closed down the East Coast was May March 15th. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 11th, actually. But yes. Well, he, I, he closed uh, down China. Al- when yeah, he, but let's talk about those deck chairs on the Titanic. Al Jazeera uh, put out a timeline. Well, wait a minute. You're reading from Al Jazeera now? <laughs> well, you wouldn't believe it if it was from the Washington <laughs> Times. So I'll read it from Al Jazeera. The New York uh, Times. had the first yeah. cases. Didn't they uh, try to get us? Uh, so in January 31st, he blocks travel from China. Right. Uh, and, and March thir- and March he- March fifteenth, March fifteenth right. is a month and, and a half, just like we said. Let me, let me let me just no, he this before before you interrupt. Uh, on February twenty sixth, we had the first community spread documented. On February uh, February, uh, excuse me. On March eleventh, Trump bans travel from Europe. So from the first documented cases of community spread, which was uh, February twenty sixth. It was about uh, less uh, about two weeks from the documented cases to when he closed down Europe, not months. It right? was a month and a half between the time he. I said it was a month and a half between the time he closed down travel from China to the time he closed down travel from Europe. He closed down travel from China on the thirty first of January. Yes, but that's because uh, uh, and and they had, at that point everyone said that he was a ho- uh, not a homophobe. He was a uh, uh, he hated Chinese xenophobe, uh, xenophobe. So so uh, and then uh, it wasn't until we had documented documented cases in the U.S. And within two weeks of that, he closed down Europe. Phil, so if he I saw, think, no, Phil, Phil, Phil but you're wrong. You're and wrong. Then, and let's not forget not Trump wrong. also no, then. Zero. Trump, Trump also then instituted a nationwide plan that took this seriously. And, oh, wait, no, he didn't. Oh, Sorry. he did. Keep, keep, keep going. <laughs> oh, but then he did a month, uh, the but then a month later he did. The two months t- later he did. Uh, Three Trump, months later, he did. No, Trump instituted the task force on. Uh, uh, he had a national emergency declaration on March 13th, and on March 17th, mm-hmm. he asked the workforce to stay home. So within days of, tra- of the travel Wait, ban, when, when did he March say? 11th, when, did, when did he say stay home? I, I did anybody uh, hear March that? 17th. Hey, this is Al Jazeera. I'm quoting. Okay? Well, then don't quote Al Jazeera. You wouldn't listen to them anyway. Well, hey, I looked it up, and they had would you time. call Al Jazeera fake news? I'm telling you. Would you I, call Al Jazeera? Call, would you call you Al Jazeera call, fake news? You call Al Jazeera fake news? Oh, absolutely, I, absolutely. Well, Al Jazeera is is not right wing uh, positive stuff. And uh, on March 17th, Al Jazeera says he, Trump asked the workforce to stay home. And he says he's for always two weeks. In the pandemic. only for two weeks. No, well, 14 that's days. They, he's got that's stay what home they, 14 that's days. What Phil, Phil, what I said here, and, I, and it is true by your facts there, is that because you're trying to change the rules here, I said he closed down China the end of January, and then it wasn't until March 15th that he closed Europe. Am I right about that? March 11th. Am I right about it? Forget about March 11th. Am I right about that? You're, yes. Uh, okay. So that, that's uh, the point. That's, that's what I said. A month and a half. That's what I said, Phil. China. But what I'm saying is the first cases that we had in the United States, uh, within two weeks, he closed down Europe. It's right I, there. I, I, I don't. Perfect. I think the cases in in uh, in Washington were a yeah. lot earlier than that. Phil. No, not according to this. It's well, just the I, that's, I, they're wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, he Charlie. didn't close down all of Europe. He only closed down some countries. He what left Britain open, do? for example. What would I have to do? Go Joe yeah. Biden to... Uh, to what to they do is fly to Britain, then they could come here. They, they're not closing down anything. Yeah, he didn't close down everything. He yeah, closed he down specifically. Europe. No, he didn't close down all Europe. England, he didn't close down. What other country did he close down? He didn't close down... Yeah, there were several of them. I don't, I don't think he closed down Russia, did he? Uh, yeah, I think he did. Uh, well, he... He closed it down based on the science. Well, he never does anything based How on How would he science. know that? Jeff had his hand up for a while. Yes, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Well, I, I, 
the president never understood what science is. So, and he doesn't talk about science. So that, don't tell me what he said or didn't say. He yeah. doesn't say shit about that. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that I was going to tell you guys, it's very strange. I, I live in a senior community mm -hmm. and a lot of people walk around. And when they walk, they don't cover themselves at all. And usually a guy is walking with his wife by themselves, not with anybody else. But as they get closer to somebody else, sometimes they go around them or whatever, but nobody wears a mask. They're amazing. Mm. So my strategy is I only go around on my bicycle. And I ride my bicycle on the road rather than... Uh, well, I walk. I find myself walking out into the street. If somebody's coming towards me and they're they're it's not wearing a mask and they're not getting out of the way, I walk in the street. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I'm doing with a with a bicycle. Yeah, and I, I do that every day. Al uh, as Alex as Bennett is a street weather. walker. That's right. <laughs> I am. Alex, he says he's a street walker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Rob, so everything. The, what? For, do, you, do you believe in the? Does everybody believe that the BBC is credible? I would say or so. What do they say? Well, they say that Donald Trump announced the sweeping travel restriction. Twenty-six European countries. The ban applies to travelers from countries which are members of the Schengen border border free travel area. The UK, Ireland, and other and other non C H E N G E N. I never heard of it countries are unaffected and u.s citizens are also exempt so he didn't close it down completely because u.s citizens can fly back and forth but you can't stop americans from coming back well and yes you can we're, we're not we're not let the disease in no you, you quarantine them after they come back that's what they did with the people on the ships you know there was uh cruise yeah, they ships didn't, they we had we had for whatever reason three million people came through new york city and that's where it spread to New York City. That's why we got it, and why Connecticut got it, and why New Jersey got it. Why did those I, three? Why did those three get it? Because we're all within this kind of area that uh, that is a greater. I uh, thought it was a uh, an attorney uh, that went to a synagogue in New Rochelle that was in Florida the week before. And he spread it to a number of people, and then it spread from there. Phil, that wasn't no. New Rochelle that was became contained. The, New Rochelle became a hot spot. They contained yeah. it. That wasn't the main problem. The main problem came when all these other people, people in New York City and so on, got infected. New York City was impacted more than a place like New Rochelle or the outlying areas. Uh, and. Because subways and well, you know, because of the subways and because of the close proximity we have to each other the density of population uh we were uh, you know we were like a wildfire getting ready to get spread you know uh new york city on the streets uh you know midtown when you're when you're walking on the sidewalk it's like being in a herd you couldn't walk in the other direction uh, yeah. you, you have to walk in the direction that all the people are walking in. Yeah, Otherwise, not, yeah, well, uh, not, not anymore. Not it's anymore. pretty hard. Now it's empty. In fact, yeah. the, the, Marjorie to, to took put the, a little context on this article, it's dated March 12, 2020. And listen to the last line. There are 1,135 confirmed cases of the virus across the U.S. with 38 deaths so far. How far have we come? Yeah. yeah. Well, on March 11th, he put the, the ban on Europe. So, you know, that was pretty early then. Well, it wasn't anybody, early. It was a month and a half too late. It says there was a thousand cases. He Rob. should have done it at the same time that he did China. You, did, you, did, you guys didn't want him to do it when he did it on China. You said he was a xenophobe. No, we said it was too late. Yeah, yeah. To do it just on China was wrong. That's what was xenophobic. That's, that's they just it was from. xenophobic because it was only China, that it wasn't China and Europe. But that's where it was coming no, from. No, but that's why it was xenophobic. No, it he was he was doing it because he still wants to call this the Chinese flu. And we have we don't have any proof yet, but we think it may have actually started somewhere else. It's the Kung Fu flu. Kung Fu. No, but he, he says that every day. He says the Chinese flu every day. Chinese plague. 
Yeah. He's calling it COVID now. <clears throat> no, he's calling it the Chinese flu. He gave a speech yesterday. I heard him call it the yep. Chinese flu. And the uh, Chinese plague. The plague from China. You know, they say it originated. He is the only man I, I know. The, he's the only politician I know who can double down on stupidity. Uh, Vote for Trump. Maybe, maybe he's double just telling the truth. <laughs> hey, as long as uh, you know, we got Josh here. Uh, there's been some things going on in the Supreme Court. You want to get his take on it? Any take on the Supreme Court rulings? Uh, good, bad. How do you feel? Um, well, can you hear me? I haven't been on here uh, for a while. Do, doing fine. Oh, doing okay. fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were traveling, but I listened to a lot of coverage while we were just rolling along. And, uh, I mean, rulings I heard sounded, uh, pretty solid. I mean, I didn't read them or anything, but, uh, you know, I just remember talking to my wife. I just kind of laughed, you know, that, uh, I know so many people on the left, I think John Roberts is like the Antichrist or something like that. And I just went over this long list of stuff with her, and I'm like, you know, I don't see it. He's done more for them than anyone could have ever imagined when he got appointed and then, you know, crucified well, you 15 know, years ago or whatever. And, hey, you know, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Phil. Isn't it, isn't it very common that a lot of times a Republican gets put, or a conservative gets put on the Supreme Court, and after a few years— he turns out to be the worst uh, thing that ever happened to a conservative. I mean, well, you had Earl, before, Earl, but... Earl Warren, who I think was a Republican, who they thought yeah. was going to be, you know, a slam dunk. Uh, and um, who else did we get? You know, Kennedy uh, was considered to be a slam dunk on the right, and he pretty much voted the way he saw it, you know? Yeah. How about Kavanaugh? Uh, I got to bow out, folks. I'll talk to you later. Why? We uh, only got about uh, two uh, minutes. We only got two minutes left. Gosh, how about Kavanaugh? Yeah, I got somebody at the thought, door. Oh, okay. Everybody thought that Kavanaugh would be a uh, a Trump surrogate, <clears throat> and uh, look what happened on the seven to two vote. Well, right. I mean, he didn't uh, he didn't side with the president, if that's how you want to say it. But we talked about this before. That's because you know, in most in most cases and this is the case for john roberts is that people like to assign opinions with political parties or or opinions that they think justices will have with their political party that appointed them and that's just not how most judges operate i know there's people shaking their head at that but it's just not how it works it's it's based not on their political party affiliation but their judicial belief i mean you know that's just the way that it usually works. It it's whatever particular well neither, ne system yeah neither. they subscribe to for constitutional interpretation, and I think that's why sometimes Roberts surprises people. But it, it doesn't really surprise me because Robert Roberts is not really a Republican. Roberts is a conservative. He's a constitutional conservative. In a lot that's of ways, so am I. That's the way it's supposed to be. Right. Yeah, but I mean, he, he, the the fact of the matter is, is that he. Uh, uh, a lot of times they're voting the way they see the law, and they're not voting the way they see their personal politics. Well, that's you know, that's, and that's, that's why you, why you a Kavanaugh can go the other way from time to time, and yeah. why we saw uh, some of the liberals on the court voting uh, uh, in that first thing about con the Congress being able to subpoena his uh, his um, uh, tax records uh, going yeah. they going the other way. So yeah, yeah I mean. Even the dissents that I saw and heard about were, uh, you know, that's the other thing is people should all there goes that like Clarence Thomas again, you know, no, he, he sort of dissented and he sort of didn't. He basically said, I'm dissenting on a technicality. I like half agree with you and I half don't. So both cases were, were basically seven to two, but in like parentheses, you could almost put nine to zero. They were nearly unanimous just because the two dissents were from an angle where they just said, I agree with the majority opinion and that the executive branch should have to comply, but I feel this particular request was overly unjudicious for this, that, and the other reason. You know, so basically they said, if you were to come back to me with some very narrow 
parameter, I would have been in the you know majority opinion. That's didn't, just a quick summary. Of both, it. I mean, Josh, didn't both justices write separate dissenting yeah. uh, opinions? I think mo I'm not sure, but I mean, I didn't see every little bit of it. But I, I think that they did. I, I think they both gave their own particular reasons. Yeah, they're right. They don't always. You know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. They both descended on a technicality, and they both saw it a little bit differently. So, I mean, even the dissents were almost. That's what I'm they, like. That's what I'm saying is they were basically like dissenting on a on a almost a technicality. It wasn't a a complete dissenting opinion where they just said, "Hey, you know, look, the people in the majority are completely wrong, and here's why." Like you sometimes see. So I, I don't imagine when they went around the table on this one, it was really all that heated. It was I think pretty they pretty funny. they pretty much said though that a president uh, yeah, may be immune from prosecution, but he's not immune from subpoena. In other words, right. if if, they, if somebody wants records in a case, and the president has those records, he has to turn those over. You know? But it can't yeah, be right. expedition. Uh, uh, Right, along with a lot of other things, and you know, uh, from what I heard, a lot of I uh, listened to a lot of coverage. Roberts went out of his way to basically say, "And please don't ever come back here again and make this argument that the president can't participate in this kind of stuff because he's too busy." You know, <laughs> which was one of the arguments they tried to use. He pretty much just said, and I'm obviously paraphrasing, but he basically just said, "You know, I'm sorry if you think he's too busy, but if you don't want to work 14-hour days." Maybe you shouldn't run for president of the United States. Too busy is not going to be an excuse. Now, it never was in the past, and it's never going to be in the future. Yeah. So This anyway. is also an example of the Kavanaugh naysayers being shown that they were wrong. No, we're right. No, about, I, don't, we're, no, I don't really know that I would go that far. I mean, I, I specifically remember telling my wife, I think we should be thankful for the people that even don't like John Roberts, that I think John Roberts seems to be a good and decent human being who you might sometimes disagree with, Brett Kavanaugh, on the other hand... Is an asshole. I think, you know, he's in a position of power. When I disagree with him, I'll disagree with him on, on policy. When I agree, I'll say I agree, but he doesn't strike me as the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. So You know, but that's not a requirement for... Yeah, I guess it's not a, a judge, so. but, uh, it, 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 not a requirement for being it, president either. It, 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 there's no, no obviously, there's no requirement for being president. <laughs> You know, yeah, um, 35 years old and yeah, born years. in the U.S. No, th uh, 35. Yeah, 35. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, it is 35. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, hey, there's the theme song. Yeah. yeah. No, this sure Trump was born in the U.S.? Though. What? Are we sure Trump was born in the U.S.? <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Kenya. I, I, yeah, Kenya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, it was the brother that was president. And by the way, I mentioned it the other night. You know what his grandfather died of? Spanish flu. So he should be really all over this epidemic. Anyway, that's it for tonight. That's it for the week. Uh, I want to thank Phil for being here. Sorry I told you to shut up, Phil, but, you know. Thank you. I, I get heated you. occasionally, just like you do. Uh, Jeff, thank you for being with us. Uh, Rob, always nice to see you there. And I love seeing the studio now. It makes me wish I were down there in the studio. Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you. Hello, uh, uh, Adrian. Right, yeah, yeah, and 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 whoever that guy is with her. Um, uh, by the way, this is Brian, and he's got this cute kid for sale. So if you um, no, not this one. <laughs> you, uh, Kevin, thank you so much, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Charlie, uh, uh, <laughs> Tony. Thank you, Patrick, and thank you, Josh. And uh, again, thank you, Adrian. That she's so adorable, How much the <laughs> Brian. She is How so much adorable. The what? How much for the children? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for yeah. the boy, cheap for the boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, everybody, why don't you give a big round of uh, wave goodbye here so I can wave back at you, and we'll see you all next week. Okay, bye-bye, everybody. There they go. That's our citizen panel. Uh, let me just hang up on them here so that uh, uh, they don't have to put up with me any longer or each other. Uh, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's got the intersection. That's right here at GabNet, and then uh, we'll uh, be off for the next couple of days on Monday, The Exchange. Yes, at 9 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time with uh, uh, Damian Chaplin, and then we'll be here on Tuesday, yes, at 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time with more of Alex Bennett's Ramble and uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, 
you know what you got to do. You got to tell her I love her, okay? And wear a mask and stay safe. Whatever you do, stay safe, okay? Okay.